My name is Estelle Brink and I'm with Jericho Wars International Prayer Network. Today we start a brand new series called Fellowship with God in Prayer. Now I remember many years ago being captured by a phrase of one of our leaders. He said, you will walk by the Spirit to the measure you talk to the Spirit. And then he started sharing about a topic I have not yet heard many people speak on. He shared in a great detail about the prayer life of the believer and how to biblically relate to God as our Father, the Lord Jesus as our Savior, and the Holy Spirit as the One who is poured out in the hearts of believers by grace and who now dwells within us. I listened to that sermon many times before I could properly comprehend what he was sharing and before those truths really sank into my heart. I realized that I had formed over the years a certain way of thinking on what prayer and speaking to God should and must look like. And in my case, up until that point, I only saw prayer as a work to be done so the kingdom of God could come on the earth as it is in heaven and many souls can be saved. So I was quite surprised to find out from personally studying scriptural accounts in the lives of New Testament believers what fellowship with God looked like for them, and the concept of having a living, personal, interactive relationship with a living God was something I knew was possible throughout the Bible, but at that time was not a personal experience at all. So the Lord really started taking us on a prayer journey at that time, and it completely transformed the way I view prayer today. The greatest desire of our Heavenly Father is for those who faithfully take up their place in prayer to grow in the understanding that the work of prayer can flow first of all from the fellowship of prayer. Once this truth becomes part of our experience in our walk with God, we will no longer grow tired, overwhelmed, or become worn out by the enormous task of prayer in the world and the church today. Instead, we will become believers filled with hope for God's kingdom to be established on the earth and we will be filled with faith that nothing is impossible and with joy that God is for us and not against us. This little shift in emphasis can literally change everything in our lives. So over the next few sessions, I want to share some of the key scriptures that help me understand my relationship with each member of the Trinity and also how you can relate to each one in prayer according to Scripture. What a treasury to build such relationship with God, to hear His voice speaking back to you, and to know that you know what He wants you to do and how to go about it. So let us ask a question that may be in your mind right now. Is it possible that my prayers are not answered because I am praying in a wrong way? Now that is a really good question to ask. And the answer, however, is not so simple as just yes or no. So let us look at the nature of our prayers by asking ourselves a few questions. So ask yourself, what is the content of my prayers? Do I mostly ask things for myself, my desires, my wants, and what I want to become and have a better life? Or are my prayers about my life, my desires, my needs, and how that can glorify the Lord? This is a very important difference to discern. The second question you must ask yourself is, when it comes to ministry and the calling on your life, do you mostly ask for more gifts, more anointing, to have a more influence or a greater following so people will see how gifted you are or how eloquent you speak? Or are your prayers about stewarding God's gifts and anointing in such a way that you decrease and He increase. Ask yourself, what is the attitude of your heart when you pray and make your needs known to God? So that brings another question. Is it then wrong to pray for my needs? No, it is never wrong. Our Heavenly Father encourages us to ask for our daily bread, which is needed for life. Matthew 6 verse 32 says that our Father knows that we need earthly things to live our lives. This scripture actually also instructs us to live a lifestyle, attitude of when your heart is after the things of God, He will certainly provide and answer your prayer for what you need. 
In the Our Father prayer, in Matthew 6, 11, Jesus encourages us to ask for daily bread. So it's not wrong to pray for personal needs. Another question may arise. Is there a way I can pray for God to answer all my prayers? No, I am sure you have asked that or had that thought before. I think it depends on what we view as an answer to prayer. Because in one sense, God is answering all of our prayers. He is saying yes to some, He is saying no to others, and He is saying wait or not yet to others. I have heard people say, the only prayer God does not answer is the prayer you have not prayed. Now, even this is not entirely true, however noble it sounds, because Scripture is clear in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. It is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. There is a key in this verse that encourages us in our walk with God. In this prayer journey, the first commandment, love the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul and all your strength. When we walk with him as our first love, over and above anything and everything we desire, want or even want to do in his kingdom, there is no way to measure what he will do in us and through us for his glory. But it will not be a reflection of who we are. It will be a glorious reflection of who he is. After this session, please visit these questions again that I touched on today. Take each one of them before the Lord in prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you areas of your life where your heart is not completely set on Him and on glorifying Him. Admit it, repent and allow Him to correct you. Ask for His forgiveness to heal your heart and to set your mind on Him. To aid you in this, I suggest you read Psalm 27 verse 4 and 5. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek inquire for and require that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold and gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to meditate, consider and inquire in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will set me high upon a rock. May the Lord bless you.